Okay, so, apologies for the absence. Here is the video where we're going to talk about the three final spheres in the Tree of Life. Uh, these are Baina, Chokma, and Kether. And we're going to talk about them all together for one reason. They are very... They are the most esoteric of all of the spheres, and as such, it is, would behoove us to understand them as a set rather than an individual sphere. You can understand the processes of, say, Hesed and Gabura, but the Supernals as a whole require a different approach. So, what are the Supernals? The Supernals are the spheres across the Abyss. The Abyss is the gap between... Uh, it is the gap between Tibereth and Kether. And as such, this is the largest gap and the largest bridge you need to cross in order to understand things in the in the Tree of Life. You can't really understand the Supernals unless you cross the Abyss. But you can't stay across the Abyss because the Supernals are the mind of God. And if you stay across the abyss, you basically get subsumed into the consciousness of the all, which is a neutral thing. It is ultimately the aim of all occultists to be able to achieve that and have achieved the great work, and the great work is union with the divine. However, it is also coming back down and sharing the knowledge you have with the rest of mankind. That is the great work, so to speak, or part of it. There's much about the great work. So, starting off with the first of the three, climbing up, we're going to go to Baina. Baina has one path we need to talk about, and that is the path relating to the tarot card, the Chariot. Now, this card is all about doing things in a roundabout way. If you think about how chariots function, so let's say I'm an, um, so chariots are in a kind of military vehicle. And the thing is, if you're thinking about, like, a medieval battle, infantry charges, cavalry charges, chariots round behind the enemy. Chariots, if they were to charge right through, you know, the horses are smaller. That's why they're not riding the horses. Um, so what they would do is they would go around. And it's also associated with the sign of cancer, which just doubles this meaning. Now, the thing about this is you get to Bina from you get to Bina from Gibora. That is one way to do it. And this way is kind of you are doing it in a roundabout way and you're taking a bit of a leap of faith so to speak and you're kind of jumping into the darkness the courage of Gabora climbing up to the darkness of Bina is very much evident by the the path here the next path going up to Bina would be the path of the lovers this is the path the H HGA descends to get to Tepereth and meet you in Tepereth this is very much indicative of the conversation your mind and your subconscious mind have in relation to the divine. Because the conscious mind in this can't talk to the divine directly. However, the divine can't really talk to the man either. He needs to go through the subconscious mind. Not that the divine can't see the man, but the woman is looking at the divine and is yelling the answers to the man. That's how the lover's card goes. 
And Baina is, for all intents and purposes, the divine architect and the divine mother. It is the most feminine and most constructive of all the spheres. This is where the primordial creation occurs based on instructions given to it by Chokma. Now, the reason I decided to do these all in one go is because Chok before we could kind of identify what it did, but for Chokma and Baina, they're really they are the the husband and wife, so to speak. Now, the thing about this is Baina is often associated with Earth entities, and by Earth entities I mean like the land itself. And Chokma is often associated with the sky. Um, this is an odd thing, but it tends to go that the creation of Baina is the primordial waters, so to speak. And the primordial waters and the primordial formulation of all things. And that's about that. So, next we have Chokma. Chokma, the paths for Chokma are the path of the Hierophant, the path of the Emperor, and from Baina to Chokma, we have the path of the Empress. Now, the path of the Hierophant. This shows us that the path from Hesed to Chokma is the higher knowledge of Chokma descending to Hesed. And we can see this by the fact that the Hierophant is at the top of the card and the attendants and the students are at the bottom of the card. Next, we have the Emperor card. The Emperor card is showing that this is kind of the primordial... This is where Tipereth gets its primordial spark from. Um, if we look at this and we, we think about it, the Emperor is like the first card. He's the one in charge. And if the Chokma energy is descending into Tipereth, that's kind of like instilling in Chokma the power of the father, so to speak, in a weird way. Which does kind of make sense, because Chokma in this would be the father, and the son is the son, because we like wordplay in magic. And the final one is the path of the empress. The path of the empress is... The archetypal wooing of the beautiful woman. You're impressing the Empress. Um, this is Chokma trying to woo and impress their will upon the receptive nature of Baina. And now we get to Chokma itself. Chokma itself... Chokma itself is all about force. Chokma is raw force. It is the f most projective sphere. So the thing about that is that Chokma's force can't be adequately understood because you can't really understand force unless you see it acting upon something. And the thing that Chokma acts upon is, in fact, Baina. That is what it does. It acts upon Baina, and that's pretty much how we want it to go. Um, this is indicative of the conscious mind projecting onto the subconscious mind in the LVX formula. And that's what we need to know for magic. So the next sphere that we need to talk about is the last sphere. And that is the first sphere that was kind of birthed into the universe, so to speak. And that would be Kether. Kether is... 
that's all I really need to say about that. Um, so the paths to Kether are the path of the Magician, the Fool, and the High Priestess. Going in reverse order, the High Priestess is Tiprath going to Kether. This has two parts. This is before the Abyss and after the Abyss. This is kind of the reflection of the divine light of Kether onto Tipereth by way of Da'ath and the Abyss. Um, this card is associated with the moon, so that does leave credence to that. However, there's also the fact that this is kind of the master of the temple, so to speak. The Hierophant may be the master of his flock, but the High Priestess is the one who... You need the High Priestess to make sure that they like that they know all the things. They have the documents. They are in the center of the tree. They, they have the attainment. They have the knowledge, and the moon is at their feet, which is often a symbol of magic in the subconscious and the astral realms. Next, we have the Magician. The Magician holding all four of the tools of the Minor Arcana. The Wand, the Sword, the Pentacle, and the Cup on his altar. And in his hand, he holds another wand in the Magician's pose. This is a powerful pose. This pose is indicative of you calling forth the energies of the Divine into your work. Now... The interesting thing is, the Magician card links Baina to Chokma, or to Kether, not Chokma. And the path of Chokma to Kether is the Fool. This is, to quote the um, version of the story I was given, the reason that the universe exists, Kabbalistically speaking, is God got bored and wanted to understand what he was, so he created the universe. Everything in the universe is an aspect of himself, and it could be seen as a fool not knowing what would happen and just taking the leap of faith. However, there is a cliff there, so we can't necessarily... The divine can travel through that path, but we cannot. We have to travel up the path of the magician. And if we look at this, we will notice that that is the path of, well, that is the L in the LVX formula. It is the metaphor by which the entire system works. Because in the beginning there was the Word, and the Word was God. And then God said, let there be light. That was what he said. Now... If we think about it, light in and of itself kind of makes sense. But if you think about it like this, the energy of Kether is reflected in all of the spheres. All of the spheres, Kether contains all of the spheres, and Kether understands everything, and Kether is the all. The lover's card shows us that the man talks to the... The man representing the conscious mind talks to the woman representing the subconscious mind and then talks to the divine. Now, in the lover's card, it's Raphael. Raphael is the angel in the lover's card. However, when we're talking about the supernals, it goes a little bit differently. Chokma talks to Bina, who talks... To Kether. The force impresses upon the subconscious, impresses upon and communicates with the divine. And the divine reflecting its instructions down to Tipareth instructs the world through the abyss. There is no Kabbalistic path between Hesed and Baina or Chokma and Gabora, those do not exist because the abyss is there. And the abyss functions kind of as a path between all of them, so to speak. 
the abyss functions as a path between Chokma to Gibora and Baina to Hesed, in my opinion. That being said, it's also the Empty Jewel, and we won't really be getting into that. I'll let you explore that. But now we have finished the Supernals, and now we have finished our little Kabbalistic escapades, and now we can move on to other topics. Thank you for joining me on this little mini-series. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like. And if you dislike this video, please leave a dislike. And if you have any suggestions, comments, or concerns, please leave them in the comment section down below.